Welcome to episode 2 of AFC Filed Still We Rise. I'm Charlie, this is my first attempt at a Football Manager YouTube series. If you're coming here from episode 1, thank you. You're clearly something of a glutton for punishment. If you're coming into this episode cold, there was a previous one for you to look back over. In it we looked at the club itself, the development of AFC Fylde from Kirkham and Wesham to Fylde in 2008 following the FA Vars success. The club has since won the FA Trophy last season, uh, becoming the first side to achieve both honours. We had a look at the expectations, which this season are for Fylde to reach the playoffs. Considering that they've been there for the last two years in the National League, that's not too unreasonable. And of course we had a look at the staff that we have on hand here at Mill Farm, which is where we discovered that my assistant, Kenny McKenna, is on a longer contract than I am, and is paid £100 a week more than I am. That has led to quite a hostile atmosphere at the training ground. The manager's office has been frosty. I'm not happy, basically. And I'm going to look to rectify that should I be offered a new contract during this season. A couple of things that I need to address from the first episode mostly to prove that I do listen back to it. I mentioned that I wasn't aware of a club that has progressed through the leagues uh, as Fylde have. As you can see, it's quite an impressive rise through the non-league ranks. I do know of another club that has done this as well. That, of course, was last season's uh, playoff winners, Salford City. They overcame Fylde in the final at Wembley. And of course, they've gone from a similar level down here, their lowest point, 12-13, all the way up into Skybet League 2, backed by the class of 92. I also couldn't remember the name of the previous chief executive, replaced by John T. Castle, who came in from Wigan. Um, it was, of course, Jamie Roberts. And I should apologise to Jamie for that. I met him a few times and he was a very nice guy. Today's focus is on the playing squad. And this is the moment where all football managers sit back and really appraise what they have at their disposal. This is the report screen, which gives us uh, the star ability and potential, along with their best role, best duty. And at this point I should make a slight confession. The whole point of this series is to get file promoted into the Football League. That is where the club is desperate to go. Everybody there at Mill Farm and especially Chairman David Haythornthwaite. His big ambition by the year 2022 is to get filed into the Football League. And I've done this already on Football Manager 2020 with the original day database of when it was first released back in November. I wrote about it on A-League FC. The caveat of that being it was a very different squad to the one that we've got in front of us now. The reason for that is because this squad was put together for over a number of years by Dave Challoner and his assistant Colin Woodthorpe. They were at the club for, I think, around eight seasons. In the summer, they recruited new players in order to push on to achieve promotion. Things didn't work out. The new players didn't play badly, but things didn't mesh very well with the existing players that were there. Chaloner left, and in has come Jim Bentley, which has also meant players have moved around, some have gone out on loan, some have left the club, and some have come in. So it is quite an amalgamated squad. 
it's not as good as the one as the original database which is going to make this a little bit tougher I will go through who has come in and gone out if you are a fan of non-league football this won't surprise you there's usually a lot of player movement between seasons because players are usually on quite short contracts and if they're offered league football clubs don't usually stand in the way if you are a fan of some of the top teams then seeing this sort of screen will be a bit surprising especially because no money has been spent at least not published the other thing to mention about this screen is that there are some players not on it who have left so the likes of Jay Lynch who was the Vanarama National League goalkeeper of the season he's not on this list but did depart over the summer to go to Rochdale his backup Russell Griffiths is also not on the list neither is a uh, filed cult favorite Andy Bond who now plies his trade at York City at the start of the season there was also Tyler Hornsby Forbes I hope I've got his name right he joined in summer and then left mid-season therefore he's not featured on here either he was a right back of the players that we had brought in Scott Duxbury has since departed on loan this is part of the high turnover of players so he was brought in by Dave Challoner start of the season from Stockport played quite well I was surprised to see him go on loan to Chorley of all places hmm. also in defence we lost Zane Francis Angol to Accrington Jordan Tunnicliffe to Crawley both of these were key players in the last two seasons you only need to look at the number of games that they played here 85 league appearances for Francis Angola left back John Tunnicliffe centre half played 46 and 40 86 games over the last two years they were joined by James Hardy he went off to Walsall that was an odd one very good player would have looked to tie him down but was allowed to leave Tom Brewitt I didn't see enough of to make a clear judgment on of the players that we brought in defensive reinforcements came with James Montgomery and Dan Lavercom two goalkeepers from Forest Green and Wigan respectively Kyle Jameson is a young lad from West Brom I will talk about him shortly Alex Whitmore from Grimsby and Andy Taylor who will be well known to Blackpool fans he's a left back during the season we've also recruited Sam Hornby another goalkeeper Jamie Proctor has come in on loan from Rotherham and we've been blessed with the presence of Jordan Williams he is a top scorer for Fylde and has moved between the left wing and four positions the reason he's done that is because of the elephant in the room which is of course the departure of Danny Rowe to Oldham Danny Rowe who scored many a goal for AFC Fylde over his five and a half year tenure obviously his last half season isn't recorded here but you only have to look at his contribution from 2016-17 to see 47 goals in 42 league appearances he was one of the reasons why it was a little bit simpler to get foul promoted at the start of the year than it is now I'm not sure about his replacement Jamie Proctor he doesn't quite fit the system yet speaking of which let's have a look at our playing squad
in goal. We've got three goalkeepers, and in real life, they're of quite similar quality, if I'm honest. I haven't seen anything from any of them to suggest they should be the clear number one. In my original save, Dan Labacombe was my goalkeeper. However, the game is pointing me towards James Montgomery with his higher ability, higher potential. On this occasion, I'm going to go with what Football Manager is directing me towards. Sam Hornby is on loan from Bradford. He'll be our designated backup for now with Lavacombe eligible for the developmental sides. But we'll see how that goes over the season. I'm not entirely comfortable with any of them. Luke Burke is our only right back, which is ironic considering that he was put on the transfer list at the start of the season by Chaloner following a falling out. Central defenders are Neil Byrne, experienced there, Alex Whitmore, Young lad Cal Jameson, and then we have Andy Taylor, uh, left back because Scott Dusbury is out on loan. Andy Keller, I haven't seen enough of again, he's, he's one of these I've not seen too many minutes where I can make a sound judgment about him. The interesting one for me is Cal Jameson. The game lists him as a central defender, which is mostly my fault as the assistant researcher for AFC files for sports interactive I submitted him as center back because that's what I think he is he's six foot one and he doesn't get forward enough of a left back for a team that really wants to attack with width down both flanks Luke Burke does on the right in football manager terms, he plays a support role rather than an attacking role. And I think he's better suited as a centre-half. His stats certainly suggest that. Although admittedly, I contributed those. So I may have done that to myself. In terms of his report... Operating at a Vanarama national level. Hmm. That's about right. But he can improve. In midfield, we'll start by looking at Lewis Montrose. Lewis Montrose is one of the better players in the Vanarama National League. But I don't think I've seen him play more than three games in succession. He tends to be injured quite a lot. I would suggest I've seen him more sitting behind me in the stand than I have seen him out on the pitch in the last few years. Which is a shame, because when he plays, he's very good. He's very strong on the ball, distributes it well, loves to put a tackle in and get the crowd fired up. He's also club captain. His position as a defensive midfielder will go to Ryan Crowsdale, who is also very good. If the two of them were available, it would be a tough choice, and I think I'd have to accommodate both. In front of those, we've got Bradders, Dan Bradley, cult favourite at AFC Fylde, and new signing Tom Walker alongside. He scored a fantastic free kick for Stockport at Mill Farm which I would suggest help make the decision to bring him in. Matty Cotolo is the right winger, although this says his best position is on the left as an inverted winger. I don't think I've ever seen him play on the left. He always plays on the right. Jordan Williams will play on the left. He could play as a striker as well. We'll come on to that in a sec. Mark Yates is a very experienced player, 34 now, but always puts a shift in. Nick Horton is another one I've not seen enough of to make an informed decision about. Hopefully we'll give him some time on the pitch and we can do that here. 
up front we're without Danny Rowe what we do have is Kurt Willoughby who's a young lad again need to see more of him Danny Phyllis Kirk is a very underrated member of the squad doesn't get half the credit he deserves and has been playing in an attacking midfield role under both Challoner and Bentley I think Jamie Proctor is the man on loan but he's much better suited as a target man which I'm not sure we're going to feature Sheldon Green is a young striker he is on loan at Bamber Bridge where hopefully he'll get some games his stats are okay for a young lad his fitness and determination something to admire operating a Vanarama North South level that's about right hmm hopefully we get to see him at some point in terms of our tactical approach I've set up two tactics already uh, I won't show you exactly how and go through all the gubbins uh, you think you want that but you don't what we've got are two styles one where we look to keep possession and then work at quite a low tempo turning the ball around keeping possession and then getting it forward on the wings using Williams on the left Kozlo on the right with Luke Burke and Andy Taylor supporting from full back second setup is a more attacking one it's a 3-5-2 basically and the idea is that we focus play through the middle and try to overwhelm our opponent in the final third with two strikers which is increasingly becoming unusual even at a national league level now obviously the playing staff will rotate here Matty Kozlo is not going to start in defence this is where we'd bring in somebody like Alex Whitmore and then hopefully with a bit of experience as a complete wing back both Burke and Taylor which sounds like a law firm will be more familiar in those roles John Williams obviously moves in from the left to partner Phyllis Kirk up front no place for Matty Kozolo unless we use him as a auxiliary striker the issue that I'm having with Jamie Proctor is that he is a target man if we put Proctor in we can see that really that's where his strength lies as a support role given that we've got an inverted foot inside forward and a winger I don't know if I really want to play him there part of pre-season will be to figure out what role we have up front if it's a target man he's the guy if not we'll start with Danny Phyllis Kirk which I'm not too uncomfortable about when you're playing football manager you've really got a choice of setup in terms of do you adhere to real life so Fylde will generally play a formation similar to this one they'll start with the three in midfield two wingers and a forward if you start playing with things like strikerless setups which I've done in the past it feels like it's more an opportunity to cheat the game not cheat at the game but to confuse the match engine and that doesn't feel proper to me I'd rather play with something that you would see uh, as part of your club so this one is described as a 4-1-4-1 and that's a fairly standard sell or is that what I started out with and that's changed since then that's why this one is very in vogue three at the back counter press get it up through the middle where we've got a solid block of players
We have scheduled five friendlies. I do have a bit of philosophy of our philosophy when it comes to friendlies. I tend to stay local for one. I think that gets, uh, gets a bit of support on your side. And I like to play one big team, one team from a league or two above. In this case, it's going to be Rochdale at home at Mill Farm. Before that, we play a couple of lower league sides. That's to build our confidence. That's to get our strikers scoring. So that when we take on the big league side, we're not embarrassed. If we are, we've then got two more fixtures against the lower league sides in order to get that confidence back up, ready for our first game away at Chesterfield in the Vanarama National League. As you can see, we're with Peterborough Sports to start with, followed by Bamber Bridge, the league club in Rochdale, and then Squiresgate and AFC Blackpool. Those two are very local to each other. There must be only 300 yards between the two grounds. It's part of a lovely little triangle in St. Anne's that has AFC Blackpool, Squiresgate and Blackpool Wren Rovers, who I cannot find on the game, which is interesting. The reason we start at Peterborough Sports is because of one of the most hilarious things that I've seen on a football pitch in some time. This season we played Peterborough Sports in either the FA Trophy or the FA Cup. I can't remember which one, it was a cup game. And <laughs> there was a large chap who midway through the game took his shirt off, hopped over the barricade, encroached on the pitch, ran around with a bunch of flowers in his hand. He was then comically chased by around five stewards in a scene you could see in a carry-on film. He ended up trying to leap back over the guardrail, uh, which didn't go so well, landed on his backside and was thrown out for good measure. But it was very good fun watching him uh, race around there. Uh, as I say, a rather large chap who really shouldn't have had his shirt off. But he had a good time. And we will have a good time as we head up to Peter Sports for our first fixture. I'm not sure what we'll have in episode 3. We will play a game. And it'll be one of these friendlies. But I'm not sure which one yet. I might record Rochdale if we've had a good couple of games. See how that goes. If not, it'll be either Squiresgate or AFC Blackpool. Probably AFC Blackpool. Because that should contain the side that we'll start the season with. We then go to Chesterfield before Notts County are the first visitors to AFC Fylde. Which makes me think that the fixtures aren't true to life because Fylde played Chorley in their first home game of the season, from what I remember. But, I did notice that we did play Stockport around the turn of the year. But it was a home game. So their fixtures don't seem to be true to life, but be that as it may, thank you for watching episode 2. We'll be back in episode 3 with one of our friendlies.